Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Mountain, river, and plain through wind and storm rides Anne of the Airlane. Forced to seek hiding in the baggage compartment of the huge experimental transport plane being used by a band of smugglers, Anne Burton finds herself an unwilling stowaway on a transatlantic hop to Cape Town, South Africa. The pilot, Jack Baker of Interstate Airlines, has agreed to assist the United States Secret Service in their efforts to track down the band of diamond runners, and to do this has apparently joined the ranks of the smugglers. Meanwhile, things are happening back in Anne's hometown, Springfield, where co-pilot Pete Peterson, hostess Kay Thompson, and Jack's brother Bobby are watching out for any messages from Jack as well as trying to fathom the identity of the mysterious Doc who is known to head the smuggling ring and who is known to have a private radio station hidden somewhere in Springfield. Let's see how much they have found out. Well, I have to hand it to you, Bobby. You certainly have done a nice job with that receiver there. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. It was quite a job to rewind that coil so I could pick up that high frequency that Mr. Morrison gave me. Cuts right through the old ether, though. Just like a factory-built job. <laughs> yeah. But I haven't heard Jack on it yet. You don't suppose maybe those gangsters have done something with him, do you, Pete? Nah, they need him to pilot that ship too badly. And besides that, Jack's too smart to let them get an idea that he wasn't playing right into their hands. <laughs> but you'd think he'd have found a chance to send some kind of a message. Just a word, maybe. Probably is having his hands full, hurting that transport along. Well... Do you suppose the fellows at headquarters got their messages through to him? I mean, the ones they sent about Miss Burton being hidden on the ship with them? I doubt it, Bobby. You see, there are two of those fellows, and they can take turns watching Jack. And you just bet that they see that he doesn't fool with that radio. It's too easy to give away a position that way. I guess that's the reason their station here in Springfield hasn't sent out any messages either. They must know the government's watching for them and that they'll get the location by cross-checking. That just reminds me. I still wonder about that radio room in the Tyler Sanitarium. You're sure that we saw it, Bobby? Oh, of course I am, Pete. Oh, gee, there it was just as plain as day. And then when we go down the same steps and go through the same door, just a little later, there's not a thing there but just a hospital laundry. Kind of gives you the creeps like it does in a show when you see a magician make a lion in a cage disappear. You know, only there's a trick to that. Pretty much of a trick to make a radio station disappear, too. But I think this doc is a bit of a magician himself. The way he fixes up these coral islands with power plants has radio beams for his own ships, airports in the middle of swamps that even pilots flying over can't find. I don't know, Pete. I feel kind of like Kay. A fellow that owns a hospital wouldn't have to be a crook when he's got a swell reputation like Doc Tyler has. No? Well, don't let those reputations fool you, Bobby. We know that radio room was in the hospital. We saw it. Maybe when Morrison gets back here, we'll have another look around that place. Say, they ought to be here pretty soon, too, Pete. Aunt Hattie's going to stay over at Kay's, I guess. 
But I wonder who this Zeb is that Mr. Morrison radioed about. You got me there, Bobby. All I can get is that he's some native down there that they picked up because he seems to have an interest in this thing. We'll know all about it just as soon as they get in, which won't be very long now, so... I... D-12, calling Baker. D-12, calling Baker. Hey, there. They're calling for Jack again. Maybe he'll answer this time. D-12, calling Baker. If you hear this, Baker, just say 12 on special frequency. If you hear this, Baker, just say 12 on special frequency. You got that receiver on that frequency, Bobby? Uh, yeah. Shh. D-12, calling Baker. If you hear this, Baker, say 12 on special frequency. We'll be listening and call again in one hour. Oh, gee. I thought maybe Jack would answer that call. I'm getting sort of worried about him, Pete. Say, uh, uh, just where is that Cape St. Roque anyway, do you know? Well, as near as I figure it, Bobby, Cape St. Roque, where Jack is heading, is that big cape that juts out of South America. It's the land that's furthest east and naturally the nearest to Africa. I guess I'm just going to have to get a couple of maps and put them up here if Jack's going to work with the Secret Service so I'll know where he is. But maybe you let me go with him. T.S. calling BM. T.S. calling BM. T.S. calling BM. That's the station here calling the transport on their own wavelength. Yeah, and maybe they'll answer on that one. At least, maybe that Vic will say something and we'll know that they're still alive. T.S. calling BM. T.S. calling BM. But with that frequency, they couldn't come in here, could they, Bobby? I mean, you wouldn't be able to pick them up. Oh, yeah, I think so, Pete. Because what I think they do is is to relay the call through the station they use to a radio beam down there in Florida. And we can get that easy and... Oh, oh, listen. VM answering TS. What do you want, TS? Where are you, VM? Where are we, Baker? Huh? Okay. I've just passed over island of Jamaica. Everything all right? Everything all right so far. Motors, gas, oil, all okay. Have to leave air now. We'll call you later on frequency number four. Okay, TS. Turn it off, Baker. I'll tell you where to pick him up next time. Pete, he's all right. Oh, but Jamaica. Gosh, I, I didn't think they'd see any land at all after they left Florida. From the way they must be flying, Bobby, they'll hardly be out of sight of land all the way down to the Cape. You see, there are islands clear across the Caribbean Sea. It makes a kind of a chain known as the Greater Antilles and the Lesser Antilles. But they're hardly the place you'd pick for a good landing. Oh, but they won't have to land, I hope. Oh, anyhow, Vic said everything was going all right. I think I'm beginning to see how they've been keeping the government from checking on them, too. Say, I got that, too, Pete. Uh, What was that frequency number? Uh, Four, wasn't it? Sure. They just make out a list of the different frequencies that they're going to use and then keep switching according to the list. And we can only pick them up if we're lucky, like we were this time. Well, that must be Kate coming in. Hi, Kate. Oh, hello, Bobby. Know anything new, Pete? Nope, Kate. We've just been fishing around trying to see if Jack is going to get a chance to use that transmitter on the government frequency. I guess he hasn't a chance. You mean you haven't heard a thing since they left Florida? Oh, oh no, Kate. We mean from Jack himself. Oh. But just a few minutes ago, we, we heard the station here, that uh, T.S., they call themselves, get in touch with Vic on the transport, and they ask his position. Hmm. Vic had asked Jack, and well, we didn't hear Jack himself, but they were over the island of Jamaica. Boy, they must be really traveling. Of course they are. Once they get up into that substratosphere, there's nothing on wings that'll catch them or even keep close. You've been down to the airport, Kay? Sure. That's what I came to tell you about, Pete. Mr. Morrison has radioed, and Interstate has granted us a leave of absence for a month. Us? Uh Uh-huh. What do you mean, us? I thought maybe that Art would see that I'd get a chance to get into this thing with Jack, but... But you just can't figure an air hostess in the business of running down smugglers. Is that it? Well, no. Uh, That is, I... Anyhow, the government evidently thinks that maybe... Oh, after hearing how Anne bailed out to take that message to Jack, well, maybe these nurses are pretty necessary after all. Especially when people take off for Africa. Africa? You mean that... Oh, I see. You mean you're going by boat, huh? I mean that we're flying. And, Pete, I think you're to do the honors at the controls just as soon as the OK comes through from Washington. Swell, Kay. All except for one thing. Just a little matter, of course, but maybe something Morrison hadn't thought of because he's been too busy trying to get back here. But just... What are we going to use in place of a plane that'll fly the Atlantic? That just shows that you don't keep up with the trend of the times, Miss Peterson. Mr. Boyle of Interstate told me not over 20 minutes ago that he was making arrangements with the government to fit out Doug's air cat with gas tanks and having it ready in a couple of days. Doug's air cat? Mm-hmm, that's right. Say, I wonder if they've gone over that ship completely since we landed. We gave it a pretty hard roughing in that hurricane. Boy, I'll say we did. I'll never forget that. You know, the way we had to land there, that emergency field. Well, that's one of the reasons the government chose the air cat. It didn't show a sign of a strain anywhere, and the motor's like new. I'll bet that Tony Johnson is pacing up and down the tarmac, watching for Art to show up in that air cat of his. <laughs> I'll say he is. But they ought to be landing pretty shortly now. We've had several radio calls from him down at the airport. Say, that reminds me... 
The station we thought was in the Tyler Sanitarium. Oh, it was in the Tyler Sanitarium. I saw it. I mean, that was in the Tyler Sanitarium. I wonder if the boys managed to get a check on the location when they called. Oh, gee whiz, I never thought to tune into here. Oh, but if they did, it was an accident, the way they've been switching around. Well, I'm afraid I've missed something, Bobby. What's all this about? Oh, well, you see, Kay, the way they've been doing, they give Vic, or maybe it was Joe, a list of the different wavelengths they were going to use with numbers the way they were going to use them. And then they just send one on one frequency and the next message on the next wave on the list, and like that on down the line. That way, if anybody's trying to cross-check them, well, it'll just be luck, that's all. Pete, I don't care what you think. There's someone with the most cunning brain I've ever heard of behind this thing, and it's not Doc Tyler. At least I don't think he's smart in that way. Have it your own way, Kay. But you have to admit he was very much put out when he almost forced him to show us down to that sub-basement. He was relieved when all of us found out that it was just a hospital laundry room. And you know yourself the way he politely but very firmly ordered us, and Morrison representing the government, too, out of that hospital. Well, if Tyler isn't the doc that's heading this diamond smuggling ring, then he'll do for the purpose until we pin the real one down. Mm -hmm. I kind of believe like Kay does, though. Dr. Tyler is... Well, I just can't believe it's him. Now, look. You can't tell me that Doc Tyler is just plain dumb. And a fellow would have to be dumb to have a radio station and nobody else knows what else, right? And they're in the same building with him all the time and him never know anything about it. Oh, I remember the time they caught the counterfeiters in the boarding house where you were staying, Pete. Now, do you mean to tell me that you knew about that all the time? Oh, no, Kay. That's different. How could I know anything about that? They kept their stuff out of sight when they weren't using well, it. that's and... just what I'm getting at. Whoever's using the hospital for a base of operations for this gang is keeping the whole thing out of sight of the owner, Doc Tyler. And the fact that the leader of the gang is known as Doc, well, well that's just a coincidence, that's all. Coincidence, huh? And I suppose that radio room disappearing was a trick by a magician, you know, like Bobby spoke of a while ago, you know, making a lion in his cage disappear on the stage. No, uh, I'm sorry, Gee, gosh, Kate. Pete, a magician. I wonder why I didn't think of that before. Maybe I got it. Oh, you mean, Bobby, that maybe this doc is a magician? Uh, no, but look. Uh, wait a minute. I got a book in Jack's bookcase. I'm going to get it. Well, I wonder what he had on his mind, bringing magicians into this thing. Well, Bobby's a pretty bright lad, Pete. Let's see. Hmm? Oh, well, did you find it, Bobby? Uh, yeah, wait a minute. It's in the book here. Hmm. Famous illusions created by Thurston, Houdini, Alexander, and other famous magicians. I still don't see what this has to do with radio stations, Bobby. Now, you'll see in just a minute. Let's see, it's on page. Oh, there it is. Right there. You see? Hmm? Hmm. Pete, that's it. There's the answer to that disappearing radio room right there. I'm getting it. Say, I think we're going to run across something tonight. Let's close up this place and get out to the airport and pick up Morrison. We'll pay Doc Tyler another visit, and this time, I bet we don't find a washing machine. Once again, Bobby, Pete, and Kay endeavor to unravel the secret of the illicit radio station that is the nucleus of the diamond smuggling ring. But just what is that book on magic to do with the secret of the Tyler Sanitarium? Each day's thrills make it imperative that you hear every one of the exciting chapters in the adventures of Anne of the Airlines. <laughs> 